you can click on any one of these three titles to get you to the uh, video uh, related to those titles. When a patient presents with fibromyalgia, they will usually present with pain as their central complaint, but there may be other associated features. So in assessing patients with fibromyalgia, one needs to consider a number of different aspects of the disease. First part of this presentation, we look at patients with pain and the types of pain that can be and this notion of central pain. So these two uh, concepts are important in understanding fibromyalgia. There are also non-somatic and somatic symptoms which are important um, and an understanding of these key elements of fibromyalgia are important if one is to manage the, the condition with any degree of success. Now pain has a number uh, of different aspects to it and it's not a simple uh, sensation uh, that's common to all of us. So before you start you need to realize that your communication with the patient about their pain is important. The patient is the best witness to their pain because they are the only people who have experienced it. You on the other hand may have experienced some pain but it may be different from the patient's experience. So setting up communication is very important. One needs to be accurate in citing uh, the pain and its radiation. One needs two-way communication because the patient may not be as articulate as you are. And so you need to empower the patient in order that they will communicate as best as possible their discomfort. Now pain isn't a, a simple thing. It can be uh, the signal of a cause or it may be a symbol of a process and so not not be related to one uh, distinct anatomic lesion. So you need a framework in which you ask as much as you can about pain and you need to understand why you ask what you ask. You need to use unambiguous words, clarify inaccurate or imprecise language that may be used by the patient and try to quantify things so that though people will commonly use terms like all over or always or sometimes one needs to specify that and try to quantify it uh, so that the recording of that uh, visit it can be looked at later on and referred to when you're assessing the progress or otherwise of the patient now socrates is the mnemonic which is best suited and most widely used as a way of breaking down the elements of what one needs to know about pain. You need, we've got all these uh, different elements uh, and need to, we need to ask about them. I'll talk about that later in relation to fibromyalgia. There are a number of different kinds of pain. There are three types uh, I will talk about, nauseoceptive, neuropathic and generalized or central pain. Now, the first type, nauseoceptive, uh, is our common experience of pain. There's a painful stimulus, such as a trauma, uh, an infection, some anatomic part that has gone wrong. There's a somatic origin to it. And as a consequence, one gets uh, pain. And for most people, that signifies disease or trauma or inflammation in relation to that pain. There are other kinds of pain. There's a neuropathic pain where the disease is within the nerve either as an entrapment or as an inflammation of the uh, nerve or impairment of the nerve the blood supply to the nerve as in mononeuritis multiplex root impingement with disc disease or root inflammation with uh, zoster inf inf infection the neuropathy um, of peripheral neuropathy uh, will give one a glove and stocking uh, disturbance which might often be referred to as pain and then there's autonomic generated pains then the third type of pain which is germane to this uh, presentation and the consideration of fibromyalgia is generalized or central pain now before the patient has experienced this type of pain they will have had no previous experience of the pain similarly you or I may well never have experienced this type of pain because it is different and so we cannot bring our common experience uh, and compare it with the patient's experience hence we need to give the patient the time 
to explain it and we need to take time to dissect it out fully because this pain is generally part of a central sensory processing problem um, in which there are abnormalities within the CNS and there is pain as often a lead symptom associated with other sensory and somatic uh, phenomena and it's this association and this pattern that can lead us first of all to make the diagnosis and second of all to give us elements that will help the patient understand their disease and uh, elements on which to uh, hang management decisions. So with central pain uh, there are usually many sites and there's usually associated visceral symptoms. And these symptoms can come from, for example, the bladder, the bowel, respiratory system, headache, and other symptoms. And one can uh, include these as part of the sensory disorder. There's often um, central problems that are not somatic, like fatigue, sleep problems, and cognition problems. And there's often a poor response to conventional analgesia because this pain is different to the uh, somatic nauseoceptive pain we commonly encounter. So because of its nature, the pain of fibromyalgia is different to our common experience of pain and needs to be de dealt, dealt with in a different way. So let's have a look. Before we start um, seeing a patient, we need to uh, get the full picture, both the positive and negative data. We need to get all the features so that we get both the somatic and non-somatic and associated uh, complaints that will illustrate the type of pain we're talking about. We need to get the full picture. So here then is a, the sort of answers one might get if one applies Socrates to the pain of fibromyalgia. The site can be at many sites and uh, so here right sided or left sided and shoulder hip girdle jaw right or left then the upper arm or lower arm upper leg or lower leg and again on the right or the left hand side are the abdomen and the chest the pain can be very widespread and can be in a number of different areas usually in a number of different areas at any one time the onset uh, for the diagnosis one needs to have at least three months of disease but it's often been present for many months prior to that and the disease is usually of a fairly gradual onset. The character of the pain is usually of a dull, aching quality, but there are plenty of exceptions. Uh, the radiation uh, is not like the radiation one sees in, say, nerve root pain. The pain is much more widespread and so radiation is often not a characteristic of the pain because it is so widely spread. It is poorly localized. There are many associations and it's by their associations and the pattern of the association that one begins to get an insight into the, that this is fibromyalgia. Uh, the somatic symptoms can come from the GI, the respiratory, the bladder, the CNS. There are visual and auditory uh, somatic symptoms as well as musculoskeletal symptoms and dermatological symptoms. And then there are more generalized non-somatic symptoms such as fatigue, waking unrefreshed, and cognitive symptoms. The time course, this, these symptoms and the pain does not really change uh, through the day in any set pattern. Uh, it does wax and wane, uh, but there is, it is very difficult to define a pattern for, the, uh, for the, the way the pain changes. Similarly with exacerbating and relieving factors, there no, there's nothing consistent uh, unlike the pain that might be associated with a mechanical problem, with an inflammatory problem, there's nothing consistent about this pain. Many things will exacerbate the pain. Similarly, the severity is variable from time to time um, and indeed throughout the day. Um, and it, there can be many different uh, phenomena that uh, make the pain worse and improve the situation. Remember that fibromyalgia affects between 1 and 3% of the population. With many patients, the disease remains undiagnosed or diagnosed very late. It's predominantly a female disease with a male-female ratio of 1 uh, to 9. 
And it's important, therefore, that this disease, uh, which can go unrecognised for a long, long time, uh, needs to be recognised early so that the patient sees all of their symptoms in the context of one disease rather than uh, a number of different symptoms and different systems becoming symptomatic simultaneously. So it's important to get a history and to get a good history. Uh, in the next part of the presentation, I will talk a little bit more about clinical features and then in the third part, we'll talk about management.